In 1972, the M badge was born, and in the 50 years since, M Power has only gone from strength to strength. We've come to Vista Heritage here with the BMW Car Club UK to deep dive into more of the car stories and to find out why M really is the most powerful letter in the world. Hello everybody, welcome back to the infield. I've got my mate Richard Stern back and uh, he's going to talk us through some of the M Power cars here because it is the 50th anniversary of the yes. famous M badge, isn't it, uh, Richard? Uh, quite something, is it? Quite a 50 years it's been. Yes, so uh, started off with uh, the South African 530 MLE. Sadly, we haven't got one here today, but so started off with those cars built for special racing in South Africa. And then really the first M car that everybody remembers is the uh, M1, of course. Yeah. Uh, we talked about that earlier. And then the, the car that's obviously the very popular and everybody sort of knows and is a household name is standing right behind you, yeah. the M3 E30. Uh, made from 1986 to 91. It was a homolo homo however you say, a homological special yeah. for the German DTM racing series. Um, and they had to produce so many to obviously enter the DTMs. Yeah. Um, the first, very first M3 E30s had, they all had this S14 engine in it, as we call it, the code name. Right. Um, however, it had a nut, the original one had 195 brake horsepower, all left-hand drive, all manual, of course. As is this one, of course, yeah. Oh, I'll go on this one. This one isn't the early one, it's the later yeah. model. And you can see the wide arches, the boxed arches of the period to get the extra traction there, the, um, the wheelbase, uh, the, the fiberglass boot spoiler, the extended rear window. Yeah. So it's all cut, uh, unique to the M3. Um, front spoiler, rear spoiler, etc. Fantastic, great balance cars, 50 50 weight distribution, which was important. Anyone that knows it's driven an M3, you know, the lightness, unlike today's cars and loaded yeah. with everything, these cars were all about that lightness, that balance having it on the edge, in the red limiter, that's what these cars were about. A joy to drive then, Richard, absolute joy to yeah, drive, and a challenge, I imagine. So is your plan to keep it Yes, to keep them on the road, yeah, or the track, yes. Um, then there were all the different models, so there was an Evo 1, there was the Evo 2. This one in here next to us is a rare Evo 2. Uh, I believe these are 215 brake horsepower, so had a bit more power, slightly different, extra additional front spoiler, and then you had the later model, the Evolution Sport. Um, they made, correct me if I'm wrong, I think 500 of them, maybe less, maybe 50 of them. Um, they had sports bucket seats, um, 245 brake horsepower engine, um, and red safety belts in them and a few other tweaks they did. But they are the built Evos are the ones that are, have gone sky high, well into the six figures if you fancy one now. Wow, um, yeah. could I borrow some money, Richard? Serious, yeah, and it's a sad because that sort of money means they get tucked away and we don't get to yeah. see them anymore. Yeah, um, they become investments, don't they? Yeah, yeah. Um, what else? I've owned two M3 E30s. I had a red one, first of all, and then a black, metallic black one. Um, dog leg gearboxes, um, options were electric windows, that sort of thing. They all came with power steering. Uh, radio, again, was an option back in those days. It wasn't just fitted. Rear blinds. This one's got a rear 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 blind. I noticed. Yeah. Leather. So a lot of them came with cloth, of course. Yeah. Available in some nice colours. The several reds actually. They came in Zinnabar, Misano, and brilliant red. So there were three actual different reds. There was some Macau blue for the later models. Metallic black, base black, silvers, different silvers, white of course, which was the famous race car. So yeah. The livery on. That we've got a. Um, What's the name car into that famous Stoke Sopers M3 yeah. replica race car here? Um, yeah, there's a couple over there as well, um, I notice. Well, we're going to look at some more cars as well. What's next on our list? Right, E28 M5. Let's go for a walk. This was the original Wolf in Shoots clothing. It was the, the, truly the original. Yeah. And 
you can see the slight wheel arch extensions, plastic wheel arch extensions. Oh, yeah. How long ago did you do this conversion? The 16 inch wheels. This particular model has got oh, is so really actually a rare it, colour. Really it's got the cloth it's interior. Like you could have leather. Um, hand built. Sort of you know, if we debadged it, people would think it was a 520. Yeah. Yeah. That's how it got the name the Wolf in Sheep's Clothing because it just caught people out. <laughs> one of Tiff Nadell's favourite cars of all time. I think Chris Harris still owns his one. He's had one or he's still got one. Um, and well, let's get a closer car. look, shall we? Because it is. Um, Debadge it, no one knows except the seasoned professional. Yeah. And, um, so if you do debadge it, and you say that if you do take the badge off. Yeah. And you say only the seasoned oh, professionals. What's the giveaway? <laughs> Centre console, <laughs> instrument cluster, uh, the seats obviously. But then don't confuse it with an M535 next to it. Yeah. Because it, they actually this one hasn't got the body kit on it. If you look at the car next to you, yeah. Some M5s came with this body kit and some didn't with the bumpers. Yeah. There's another red example over there that had we need to drop the normal bumpers, which made it even more discreet. Yeah, yeah. That, I quite like it without actually. I yeah. like it with and without actually. Yeah, so it was down to personal choice to the original owners at the end of the day. So they actually originally made only 186 right hand drive cars. Right. But a lot of people don't know this. The last one, 186, was for the chairman of BMW back in the day. Okay. And someone and backed it into a ramp. Uh, How long have you had this? And bent the seat post. Oops. So they rung up Germany and went, can we have another one? We've just written off this car and they went no you've had your allocation the 186 right hand drives so a couple of weeks go past as the story so goes they then ran back the uk the chairman in the uk and said we can make you another one 187 and sure enough they did and that car a friend of mine still owns that car it's got 11,000 miles on it from new so you know who i'm talking about everybody and it because it was a special even a special special made one all the dash inside was done in suede and hands oh Alcantara, all hand stitch, all the rear parcel oh. shelf, all in the boot. Oh my god. Yeah, wow. it is absolutely stunning. And his is a one off colour in the Mac Al Blue, which of course I mentioned earlier, which they used for the M330. Yeah. So, one off colour there. I had one as well in malachite green, a dark metallic green, one of only two in, that, yeah. in the world. That is now in a dealership in Southampton, Partridge BMW. The owner principal has just bought that car, and I saw it the other day and I cried, you know, as you do. Um, this is Keith Bridges' car, in fact. Hello, Keith. Hello, Keith. Hi, you must be a proud man with this car. It's beautiful. I was just listening to you. <laughs> well, he's the expert, not me. Right, right. Yeah. How long have you owned it? Sorry? How, How long have you owned it? 18 years I've had it now. Right, you're never going to let it go, right? 2004. Probably not. In fact, I've just had a guy come up and give me his card. He said, if ever you sell it, or if ever you want to sell it, give me first choice. Wow. Okay. Put his, 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 his own details on the back and his uh, business details on the front. Wow. Okay. Yeah. There you go, it uh, could be a profitable day. <laughs> I mean, yeah, they've shot up in value, a mint one low mileage now. You'd be asking, t nudging the six figures, I suppose, traders nudging yeah. six figures. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of rebuilt ones. There were some South African right-hand drive cars, so be careful if you're looking for one. Make sure it's an original UK car, because obviously South African cars, if they weren't as limited numbers, they're not worth quite as much. But maybe that's your route into getting an M5 yeah. E28. Great car, great. All oh, E28s were just great cars in the first place. Great build quality, practical, big boot, comfortable, uh, before it all got silly, really. Um, the, the original driver's car, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. it is really. It's family size, although if you compare it with a, a current 3 Series, it's only about the same length. Yeah. But plenty of room inside, and as Richard says, plenty of boot space as well. And obviously an M5 guy's quick enough. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thanks so much. Thanks for bringing it. Thanks for letting us uh, have a little look at it too. Uh, Richard, got time for one more, I think. Yeah, yeah, and the battery, quickly, the battery was moved out the engine bay to make room for that engine that was the engine in the M1, remember, was moved to the boot. This guy knows everything, literally everything. Oh, one more, where are we going? E36 M3, and I've just seen a nice example. Oh, perfect. Right, here we are. Wow. Great example, huh? How come you didn't get to yeah. drive it properly? Not well, there's a, there's a cat. Well, that's good actually because we've got a convertible next to yeah. it. Yeah. Right, M3E36. So this, the 
second generation. Now the interesting thing about this model was not only was it just a coupe, they made a convertible. Yeah. And did they make that? One of the websites said they made, no. Anyway, they made a convertible and a coupe version. Oh, and a four-door saloon. How could I forget? Anyway, this had, again, a straight six, three-litre engine, 3.2, sorry. They did an early version, and then they did a later Evo Sport, which had a bit more of the 3.2, a bit more power, obviously. 321 brake horsepower, uh, manual. I think they were all manual. Can I just check? Uh, yep. Yeah. Yes, that's manual. manual. Anyway, they may have, yeah, I think they were all manual. Correct me if I'm wrong, everybody. Um, nice. <laughs> we'll let you off. Don't worry. Available with some nice colours, options, etc. Um, E36s manufactured from what was it? Yeah, 92 onwards to 95, roughly. Um, with the last, that's an Evo Sport. And then yep. the giveaway on that is the clear indicator. So the earlier ones had the orange Well, let's, let's go stand by that one now as well, because uh, we've had a good look at this one. Let's have a look at this. Beautiful colour. Yeah. Beautiful colour. With these lovely uh, diamond cup wheels. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful colour. Yeah. I've owned one of these as well in a coupe and a convertible. Anyway, uh, and obviously the Estrel Blue with the grey leather, straight six engine, 321 brake horsepower. Fabulous, fabulous car. It was the first car that the M car that had the Vanos, as you've all probably heard about. Yeah. So you know you need to make sure good maintenance and history with any car, the cars like this. Make sure the Vanos seals aren't leaking and all the rest. And there's some people that can do that for you and service your Vanos, but so it controls all the valve gear. Yeah. Um, and if it's in bad order, you're going to have problems. But I do not hear some horror stories where to do it properly, you're looking at about a bill of three grand to wow. rebuild the Vanos, but it's cheaper than an engine going bang. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, fabulous car. Some would say not as, you know, now they've chopped the roof off like the E30. Yeah. It's lost that essence, shall we say, about it. But listen, it appealed to a bigger market. Uh, and they sold by their tens of thousands. In fact, I think I've got the figures here. Have I got the figures? Oh, yeah. No. That's oh, that's just the production there. figures, no, yeah. Sorry. The coupe sedan convertible, last models being the Evos, manufactured from 95, 3.3. Yeah, the earlier one was just a three litre dough. And they also was able to sell them to the US, of course. Mass uh, sell to the go. US. They had less power because of the catalyst they had right. to fit in the US, so they were a bit less powered than European cars. And yeah, you can notice the nice mirrors that everybody wants. Yeah. They were they used to get nicked from put on Vauxhall Novas. Yeah. Those, yeah, seriously. Vauxhall Novas, yeah. Well, yeah. I remember All the Oiks yeah. used to nick the mirrors off of these and put them on their Vauxhall Novas. Yeah. Well. You can now buy cheap copies these guys on eBay, you don't need to nick them. <laughs> right, good stuff. Uh, Richard, let, I'm going to ask you a question, very quick question. All right, I'm going to give you a garage. You've yes, got to fill it yes. with three BMWs. Uh, easy. Go on then, what are they? Well, the 2002 TII, which I've got. Yep. That, that one's the easy one. That, that's the, yeah, done. The, the M5, Two more. M5 E28. Okay. And probably the M5 E39, which we haven't talked about. Okay. But a fabulous car. Hopefully, we'll get to talk about that later. Yeah, if we get a chance, we'll certainly touch yeah, on they're, that. Yeah, they're fantastic cars going through the roof values. Fantastic V8. And the funny thing, quickly, so I had the E28 and I went to the dealership in 2000 with my E28 M5 to look at the new, new E39 M5. And I said to the salesman at the time, I would not swap my car for your car at 60 grand, yeah. right? Because it was bigger, it was heavier. And it's funny, because 20 years later, the owner, me, was bigger and heavier. <laughs> and there I was driving the yeah. car that I didn't want because it was bigger and heavier, 20 years later. But no, seriously, the E39 M5, very collectible now, very desirable. They're 20 years old, they're going off, so try and find a good one of those. It's getting difficult, hence prices are going yeah. up. Right, here we are at Vista Heritage with uh, Richard Saints, not Donington Park, of course. We've got a few more cars to see, haven't we? And yeah. you're going to talk us through. And we're starting here. What have we got? Yeah, hi. We're standing next to the M5 E34. Oh. So the second 
second generation following on from the E28. Yeah. Um, built from the late 80s to the early 90s. This particular model is the later one. Uh, it's a 3.8. The first models were 3.6s. Yeah. And the differences you can spot on these is the two tones, the, the main colour, Avis Blue, this particular model, with the silver grey sills and lower trim around the front and rear bumpers which were also different to the M5s. Um, early models as I said were 3.6 straight sixes. Yep. This model is the later 3.8 all manual cars and this developed three, 360 brake horsepower I believe. 340 brake. We'll check with the owner in a minute. Yeah, the owner um, is here, isn't he? He's yeah. pottering about somewhere, yeah. actually. He's just stood over there, isn't he? Um, <laughs> obviously, right hand drive UK cars. But the interesting fact about the E34 was the first they built touring estate models of this right. particular yeah. model. All left hand drive, though. Uh, and they are very collectible, they only made a few of those. Um, and if you can find one of those, good luck to you, like hen's teeth. And there you go. Um, if you can find one, get it. Yeah, um, <laughs> but they did make the first ever touring version of an M car in the E34, so this particular right. car, which were quite sought after and still are today. Yeah. So, yeah, beautiful engine, clean engine, this particular model. There's a few here today. There's another 3.8 there. Oh, we can yeah, tell by the two-tone bumpers, yeah. seal covers, Blue in the well, Avis Blue, with the grey leather, obviously common. Um, yeah, beautiful cars, sunroof. Well, the owner's over here. Let's, yeah. let's see if we can uh, grab him very quickly. Uh, first of all, uh, Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. How long have you owned it? Uh, four years. Yeah, and we want to know, we're talking about how many horses underneath there? 340 PS, allegedly. 340. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, you're never going to let it go away. Is, is this, no, is this yours keeper. forever now? Yeah, keeper, this one is. Why BMWs in, in particular? Well, I've had E34 M5 consistently for about 22, 23 years now, and uh, just a, a good car that can do everything. Yeah. Is it a daily? Do you still use it a daily? No, no, not anymore. No, I, I don't use it as a daily. I did initially use um, as daily cars, but when they all became a bit sort of old and, and precious, I sort of had them as yeah. toys. Look, so fuel price is coming down a little bit now, though. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, it did <laughs> either. No, not worth a lot of money. My first one, I think I paid about 4,000 quid for. Um, really? It has a, a 3.6, um, and that was about 1999, 2000. Do we know what this is worth, roughly? I don't know. Are you I'd happy like to, to say? <laughs> I don't know. I think you know it's subjective. It's worth whatever someone's willing to pay for it. Yes, is that absolutely. phrase. Come in, it's good to meet you. Okay, and thanks for bringing right. this down. We were no just uh, no chatting no about it. He says it makes a bit of a roar. We're wondering if you would mind firing it up I for can. us. Is that okay? Better here we go. Warm it up first before you give it some beans. We better warm it up first. But here we go. Do you know what the boot's made out of? Um, it's very cardboard, um, it's just a plastic. Plastic. <laughs> it's, it's probably what they call a resin sort of yeah. thing to make it that lightweight. Yeah. So you can't appreciate it, but when you hear these on... when well, they're we'll being, let it warm up a bit. Yeah, we... so, so how long have you owned it? Uh, brand new. This is brand new? 2003. Wow, because wow. uh, we were just hearing when they first came out, they couldn't be given away. Almost, oh, they couldn't. You, they were, couldn't. you were one of the early ones straight in there. Yeah, didn't? so we had a 330 CI Sport before this, a 51 plate. Uh, which was a fantastic car and then we uh, when they showed it in BMW car magazine I literally read the article yeah. and at that point phoned the um, dealer and said that we'd like one wow. um, and then we just waited for the vehicle to arrive but you're quite right you couldn't give them away because I mean we bought this and then a couple of weeks later um, back in the day Sunday times used to do the adverts yeah they were 41 oh, yeah. 42 my dad was like oh what have we done you know but I said it, it, it wasn't never an investment, it was just a car that we wanted. But it uh, turns out it's probably turned into quite an investment yeah, now, hasn't it? Yeah, it's an investment if you can part with it, yeah. and, until then it's just a, it's a car. But they are fantastic, yeah. Been fortunate enough to have it since new, so it is. It's have lovely. you done many miles in it? Uh, it's just shy, it's actually done 22,820 miles today. Okay, so not a lot then? Not so a lot, not no. Not at all. So why this car then? Was it, was it a passion for the site I just saw? So I'm, I'm into cars, I've got a E28 M535 as well. Um, that car was the car that got me into it, but when we bought our 330 CI Sport, there was a, a Laguna Seca Blue M3 there. Ah, Standard beautiful. car, yeah. um, you know, no nav, no nothing. And I thought, well, why don't we get that? And the consensus was probably a bit too powerful just to start off with. So um, then this came up, I knew it was going to be a special car. Yeah. Um, and I think it's very much one of these cars that 
in the last few years they've come into their own, but yeah. you've got to know what it is. Yeah. It definitely attracts less attention than the uh, yeah. 330 CI Sport used to. But sometimes you see those, they go a little bit under the radar, don't yeah, they? And yeah. then suddenly, you know, they just appear. Yeah. Yeah. And they're, they're the car to have. And, and, and to think that at one point these cars were down to 21,000 pounds. Wow. Yeah, That's and now they're, you can't, this is insured for 135. Wow. Wow. Yeah, that so is, it's a... But you're not going to let it go, are you? You've had it since, since new, you can't let it go. Oh, I, I, I sometimes do want to let it go, but then, I dri <laughs> uh, but then I drive it and I think to myself, can't let it go. Can't no, let it go. No. There's, well, there's only two people that drive it. It's myself and my mum uses it as well. So, yeah, yeah she, uses it, she uses it to go to the temple. So it gets, a, it gets a run. So when it's in London, she'll use it to keep it ticking over. Yeah. They're the A2, we're the A2 people that use it, but yeah. Well, it's in great condition, Yeah, it's isn't fantastic, it? yeah. Shall we uh, hear it yeah, fire yeah, a little bit? You ready for this, Richard? Well, not me, you wait. I mean, <laughs> I don't know if we... If you want to even when they're on full chat, man. <laughs> Lovely, lovely stuff. Nearly blew my trousers off there. <laughs> yeah, she's special. Uh, what does she like to drive then? Tell us. She's she's very composed. Very, you know, once the box comes on um, and it's got the raw. For me, it's about getting to the 70 and enjoying the raw, as yeah. opposed to doing, uh, you know, over 70, 80 miles per hour in the vehicle. Oh, yeah. You yeah. just want to hear the intake. It is absolutely fantastic. Wow. Um, a stonking car, practical. Yeah. What could you actually change it? I wouldn't. Would you replace it? And with? I suggest you don't either. <laughs> Thank you so much. No worries. Really appreciate Thank you it. Time. Yeah, carbon door cards, obviously, as yeah. well. I noticed they're not obviously the, the cloth in tier rather than leather, so you haven't got the, the full leather as well. Right, Richard, we've got some more cars to go we check out, haven't we? So e let's go 30, do that. E39 M5. Fantastic. Thanks, Gabinda. Thank you. And the temp Thanks for that, mate. Track, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Never been to that one. Yeah, I don't know that one. <laughs> right, now we were just talking about Z8. You led us nicely in, here we are. Yes, so the Z8, um, James Bond's car, Pierce Bronson, if you remember, in the film. Oh, Die Another Day or Tomorrow Never Dies or one of those. Whatever, that's Somebody what can Google's tell us. for. Yeah, that's what Google said. We yeah. will Google it, but uh, yeah. Yeah, so Z8, it was too. The shape was to replicate the old 50s 507, yep. if you remember. Um, Elvis Presley had one, by the way, and B yeah, BMW have got one, and so is Munich and all the rest. You know, high-end, evocative sports yep. convertible. This, These cars, all left-hand drivers have said, they've got the back to the M5 E39 engine and running gear. Uh, 400 brake in this... Well, lightweight, convertible, absolutely fabulous. Um, Do you know how many were, were made of these? That, no. Have I put you on a spot No, there? no, I can't remember. It wasn't it many. It wasn't a huge amount. It wasn't was many. It? Uh, it was, oh, that might be about this car. If we scan that later, it might tell we us will. all about it. Yeah. Scan me with your phone to find out more. There we there go. There we go. <laughs> Unless he's selling it. Um, all left-hand drive. They were made, when you bought one brand new back in 2000, you got a book with uh, all the early designs, artist oh, impressions wow. of what it was. So if you buy one, make oh. sure you get that Z8 book with it. I was going to say, that will be, yeah. that's probably worth something yeah. in its own so, right. Uh, yeah, so I had one years ago because BMW gave me one for something or other. And Still got it? No, I auctioned it too cheap as usual. <laughs> anyway. There's a theme here, Richard. All left-hand <laughs> drive, beautiful. It's got the slats in the front wings like it should, like the old 507. Yeah. It was to replicate that look. Yeah. And people didn't warm to them at first of really yeah. either. But now, the, no, I, remember, yeah. I remember seeing them in the shopping malls in America covered in dust and you could buy them for $40,000. Yeah. Now, you'd be lucky to find one for under 150. Wow. Uh, and I and know that red interior just makes it. The as red well, looks it? spectacular oh. on the silver. Um, they did them in black, a dark blue, and I'm sure I'll be corrected, but on some other colours. There wasn't a lot of options on the colours. Now, the other interesting fact is Alpina also made their version of the Z8, yeah. but they actually took out the E39 M5 engine and put in a standard, well, it wasn't standard after they got hold of it, yeah. but they put in a V8 4.4, I believe, and then tuned it all. But the interesting fact was all the Alpinas were automatics. Oh, okay. And they put the Alpina 19-inch wheels on them, yeah. etc. Et these, are, these are a 20-inch copy by the look of it. 
of the Alpina style, but that's just personal taste. He obviously wants to fill up the arches. But I've actually driven one of these now, and I didn't like one before. Okay. You know, the styling, sort of mm, a bit ostentatious maybe, but now I've driven one, now I want one. Yeah, you're in, you're in that Because I'm being that, F, that M5 driver. You've got a spare 150 oh. grand. Oh, I up some, yeah. <laughs> I, knew, I knew of a beautiful blue example with 300 miles on it, delivery miles. Yeah. Uh, still have the plastic on the steering wheel and the seats. That was up for sale last year. They couldn't sell it. That's now a quarter of a million pound car. Wow. And it's just, yeah. What sort of horses we got under here? 400, same 400. as the M5, 400. But it's called smaller, lightweight, shorter. Um, yeah, look inside. Uh, you've got, so they also tried to replicate all the old switch gear and the steering wheel from the 507. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, check out the dials and the dashboard, etc. because that was trying to replicate the old 507. It looks a bit of a spaceship, doesn't it? It still looks modern now, doesn't it? Even though oh, it's, what, 22 years old. Now I've driven one, I want one. And the other interesting thing, I knew a trade, I used to work in London doing all the IT stuff, of course I did, right? So a trader took me out in one around the city back in oh, 2000. No he said, I've got to pop into the dealer, my rear indicator's gone out. I said, okay, well, all right, pop into the dealer. You can't, what, can't you change a bulb? <laughs> he went, no, they've got to take the whole rear bumper off to change You'll the indicator bulb. You'll probably wreck the warranty as well by doing it yeah. yourself. Yes, they have to take the old rear bumper off to change the indicator bulb. Wow. You know? So the label would cost more than the bulb. Yeah, so I, I don't know what they're like to maintain, to run and own. That would be an interesting thought. Yeah. Um, this one, I think, I don't know if it might be owned by M Style, the company. I'm not sure, hence the number. I've just spotted the owner, actually. Ah, yes, I wonder Should if we, we go could uh, signal. Yeah, you go grab them, see if we can grab their attention, and we'll uh, have a quick word whilst we uh, ooze over this beautiful Z8. Right, here we are with the owner, Imran, of this Z8. Now, we've just been drooling over it, so apologies about that. But tell us more about it. How long have you had it? Uh, so we bought it around uh, in March this year. Uh, ah, so it was long not okay. long. Uh, it was always on the list of dream cars and it just seemed to be coming more unobtainable as the prices kept going up. But uh, I share a car collection with my business partner. Wow. So we both wanted the car and we had the money to buy one. I was like, we need to buy one now before they go up even well, we've further. Just, we've just been talking about that, haven't we, Richard, <laughs> actually, that the value of these, they're just going up and up. And I up think up. people are really appreciating what they are now they yes. weren't appreciated when they were new because people thought they were a sport, like a sports car but they're not really a sports car it's a gt tourer uh, and yeah. if you take it yeah. for what it is i mean it's a stunning piece of design everything is bespoke on yeah. it it's almost like bmw did a rust resto mod yeah. back then they took a 507 and said how can we modernize it and essentially this is what you've ended up with obviously this is not standard we've done yeah. a few bits on it what um, have you done to it then tell us so we've done uh bilstein coilover suspension that was custom made by a company called ntp in italy so right. it's like their motorsport dampers um the car is quite soft and wallowy from factory yeah. which is fine if you want to cruise around uh but if you want to corner a little bit and have some enjoyment the suspension keeps it really flat sure. so it was a well worth upgrade but mainly i wanted it to lower the car slightly because right. obviously we've changed the yeah. wheels standard wheels are 18 inch and for me the car is designed absolutely beautifully, but the standard wheels for me let the car down. I think they're very okay. soft. And even if you listen to interviews with the designer, Henrik Fisker, he actually said the car was meant to come with 19 inch wheels and right. they changed it. So these are a custom set of 20 inch uh, two piece forged wheels that are based on the Alpina design. Yeah. So initially yeah. I was going to buy the Alpinas and then I thought, why don't I just like do something a little bit I like that. different? Yeah. And I own a wheel brand company, so that's my wheel brand company. So we designed a custom set of wheels for it. And I think they turned out they look really well because we've yeah. managed to get the chrome out as the brushed inner, so you're matching the chrome around here. And I think the wheels really set the car off. And then sound and performance-wise, they're very muted. I wasn't interested right. in getting more power out of the car, but we have done purely because we fitted a full set of super fit manifolds, sports cats exhaust this car sounds incredible now before it was like not making any sound at all it was very quiet but now it's got that low v8 rumble low oh. down and then it's screaming you at the top end if your stomach right? and then i also own a company called evolve which is a bmw tuning company yeah. so we tuned the car to suit the manifold so it's making 440 horsepower now so it was 390 before Ooh. and we've got an extra 50 horsepower nice. and a just by those two because the manifolds are so restrictive on these cars they're same as E39 M5, they've used the 540i manifolds, which 
they're useless. It's like a resting beast Basically. right now, isn't it? Yeah. Now, you mentioned your car collection. Yep. Is it just BMWs or have you got all sorts? Mainly BMW M Power. Yeah. Yeah, so. Uh, so what makes it onto the list? Is it literally just anything? It's, it's got the M badge, got to have it. M badge and special. So we've got an E46 M3 CSL. Yep. We've got a just BMW Z3 then, yeah. M Coupe with an S54. Yep. We've got an E39 M5 with a supercharger, which is over there, the red one. Uh, we have an E92 M3 in Japan red. Uh, non BMW wise. Which is frothing at the mouth here. <laughs> yeah, so we have some of the modern cars because uh, I own a BMW tuning company. We've got a G82, yep. an F80, uh, an F10, F90 M5 as well. So they're like wow. our demo cars. Um, but we recently bought a Volkswagen Golf Rally. Right, so okay. I'm not I'm not a huge Volkswagen fan, but my business partner had one when he was yeah. younger. So we've added one of those I like it. into the collection. So we've got a few more to go. Yeah, man, thanks so much for coming no out and bringing this. It, it really you. is a treat. We start this. We want to hear it, surely. Yeah. Can, can we start this? Is that yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> did you get you guys the book? Did the, you the key get, ring? Like, did you get the key? Comes did in you like get the book with I it? I didn't, Ah, you know about the book. Yeah. yeah. I bought this. They only had one left in Germany, so it's like, because oh. it doesn't have a hole for the key. So oh, look at that. Like, yeah, it's very special. So you lose them? Yeah. Yeah. So you can spend a fortune getting more. Oh, look at this. Even the number plates has style on it, Richard. Oh, yes. Imran, I think you uh, almost blew the mic cover off there. <laughs> Hopefully you enjoyed that. Thank you so much. Thanks for bringing it down. No really appreciate it. There you go. Good stuff. Richard, we've got more cars yes. to go see. Let's go check them out. Right. Cheers. Right, I'm here with Richard Baxter. Now, Richard, this is your car and it's got a very historic story, hasn't it? Tell yes. us about, about the 187. <laughs> well, 187 um, was one number out of production. It finished at 186, and the uh, the owner, well, say the owner, it was the manager director of GM, uh, BMW GB, and his car was number 62, we think. Right. It was in the workshop, came off the ramp, and they reversed it into a. Oh, no. Whoops. A, another ramp, and it creased the back of the window. So he said, Well, I can't have that, so build me another one. So um, they sent an order into Motorsport. And they said, sorry, we're out of, we, we stopped production. Um, we're about to start the E34, it's not going to happen. And then about two weeks passed and they said, well, we, we checked the, the storeroom. We've got enough to make another car. <laughs> and this is the car. Wow. So, so it's down to a very high spec. 186 officially made then, of course, one more, one this more. one. And yep. it's this very one, 187. And yep. we talk about the spec, the stitching inside everything is absolutely on point isn't it yeah it is it's got very high specification it's got full leather uh full leather dash steering wheel console the um the roof is suede the roof lining is suede the boot lining on the boot floor Can is also suede yeah right? let's, let's have a look in the boot in there, oh, don't worry about that don't worry Oh, wow. So you can see all this is all leather lined. Yeah. And then underneath here, uh, the actual boot floor, the carpet rather, is suede. Oh. We put this cover on it just to protect it. Really. Yeah. Absolutely um, beautiful. How did you come to acquire it, uh, Richard? It, was, it, was, it came up, BMW decided to sell it. It was in their classic fleet, fleet yeah. and decided to sell it. And uh, I saw it for sale in, in a dealership. Um, wow. It done about two and a half thousand miles. Yeah, and the service book on there every um, every two or three months they took it out for a 125 mile drive. Yeah, so it's got a book full of all services. Right. And um, anyway, I I looked at it and it was very expensive. Yeah, and I tried to negotiate. We negotiated for six months. Wow, really? and finally we kind of did a deal. But that's back in '92. Yeah, so it's been around yeah a long time. So you've had 30 it. years. I was going to say, you're not going to let it go, are you? No. It's, no. Too, it's just such a special little thing. Oh, it is. Yeah. <laughs> not quite little, but yes. <laughs> Incredible. Richard, thank you so much for sharing that story. It's absolutely beautiful. Thanks for bringing it down today as yeah, well. Pleasure. We really, really do appreciate it.